Hey guys, thanks for joining me back here on the Flying S Models channel. I'm Chad and I'm pretty excited about this particular kit review. I'm a huge fan of the more unique aircraft that often get overlooked by the mainstream model industry, at least in my preferred scale of 148. This is the case with the awesome Fairy Gannet. Developed just after World War II as a dual role submarine hunter and attack aircraft, it was powered by two Mamba jet engines driving contra-rotating props. It's just ugly enough to be really good looking to me. I prefer the AEW-3 airborne early warning version, but up until now, it has only been available in 172nd. There have been a couple ASW-1 variants released over the years, one by Classic Airframes and one by Dynavector. The Classic Airframes kit is really nice for a limited run injection molded kit and has some excellent resin detailed parts for the cockpit, wheelbase, front intake, and wheels. But this kit is pretty tough to find, and when you do find one, you are likely to have to pay dearly for it. The Dynavector kit is still easier to find and can be had for a reasonable price, but it's vacuum formed with white metal parts. While I'm okay with vac form parts, I typically don't like the soft detail that you find on white metal parts. There have been some really good Gannet kits offered in 172nd for both the AEW-3 and ASW-1 variants. Both Sword and Alley Cat produce excellent kits with the Sword kit being injection molded and the Alley Cat kit being an all resin kit. But like I said, I prefer 148th scale, as do a lot of modelers, especially the older I get and the more tired my eyes become. I happened upon a post on an online forum that showed a 148th Gannett AEW-3 available from a company I'd never heard of before, Icelandic Fine Art. It also contained the contact information for Alan Wilson out of the UK, so I reached out to him to see if the kit was still available. To my good fortune, it was, so I promptly placed an order. Since placing that order, I've actually been in discussions with Alan and Resin to Detail in order to take over production of this particular kit. We are still working out the specifics, but in the future, you'll be able to pick up one of these kits from Resin to Detail, and they will include a lot of updated parts that will be computer designed and 3D printed. Currently, the kit doesn't include any decals, but that's more than okay with me, as I'll be using my Silhouette Cameo Cutter to cut my own custom masks. If you wanna see a demo on that, I have a video up here on the channel that shows you how it's done, so make sure to check that out later. The kit arrived yesterday in a long skinny box. I was a little worried at first, as it was actually marked with an image of a 1-144 Saunders Row Princess Flying Boat. While that would definitely be a cool model, I really wanted the Gannet. I was certainly happy when I opened up the box and confirmed it was indeed the fairy Gannet I had ordered. So let's take a look at what all is inside the box. First, there's a small bag that contains a lot of small resin parts. The wings are cast as solid left and right halves, and the fuselage pieces are hollow cast in left and right halves as well. There are some folded up sheets which include some instructions as well as general guidance for how to build resin kits. So let's first take a look at what all is included on the printed sheets. The first sheet has some basic instructions for those new to working with resin parts. This includes washing the parts to get rid of the mold release, the precautions when sanding resin pieces, how to fill resin parts, and guidance on what types of glue to use for various component assemblies. In terms of fillers for resin kits, I've got an excellent solution to that, and there's a video up here on the channel so you can check that out later. Alan has provided some handwritten notes on specific instructions and details for the Gannett model. He points out a few things about the kit itself, such as the slightly out of scale thickness of the landing gear in order to handle the heft of the finished model. I really like the fact that he provides this additional information for the modeler. The instructions give a high-level overview of how to assemble the model and consist of four pages of illustrations. The first page provides instructions for the cockpit and fuselage assembly. Sheet 2 provides details for assembling the wing and tail along with installation of the front intake cover, the props, and the spinners. Sheet 3 provides instructions for installing the landing gear and wheels and sheet four provides details for installing the radome. There is a sheet that provides a four view drawing of the Gannet with specific markings for the aircraft flown off of the HMS Ark Royal in 1978. The final sheet provides a detailed view of the cockpit instrument panel, which will come in handy when detailing that particular kit component. First off, let's check out the fuselage halves. 
The castings are really nice overall with smooth surface finish and finely engraved panel line detail. Allen has provided clear cast crew access doors for the right and left fuselage halves, so those areas will have to be cut out from the fuselage sides. The wing root and horizontal tail attachment areas are molded into the fuselage halves. There are a few areas on the fuselage halves that will need to be addressed, but these should be relatively easy to handle. There's a warp on the vertical stabilizer and a small air bubble pocket at its root. The other issue that will be a little bit more challenging for the modeler to deal with will be the turbine exhaust stacks. Those areas are well molded on the outside, but the pipes get closed up during the molding process, so they'll have to be drilled out. There's a little flash on the fuselage halves at the upper, lower, and front ends, so this will need to be sanded off. The insides of the fuselage halves are devoid of any detail, so if you decide to add crew stations or make modifications to the cockpit sidewalls, you'll have to add those details yourself. Let's do a quick alignment and fit check of the fuselage halves. Remember, I have done nothing to prep them, so they are straight out of the box. I'm actually very impressed with the fit and alignment that we have on the parts without any sanding of the mating halves. The wing halves are cast as two solid pieces, one for the right wing and one for the left. The surface detail is as equally nice as the fuselage halves. There are a few small surface imperfections along the trailing edges, but these will be easily sanded smooth. The wheel wells are devoid of any detail, but Allen does provide some closeout pieces for those. The modeler will have to sand those a little bit to get them to fit into place, and the detail on them is relatively basic. This is an area that I'll be adding some extra detail in the form of scratch-built parts. It's also one of those areas that will be addressed in the updated parts from resin to detail in the future. There's a small bag that contains all of the smaller resin castings. I think I'll just take a look at the major ones in this video kit review. The complex engine intake section is well represented in this kit. The contra rotating spinners are cast as a single piece and the detail is pretty nice. They fit well into the front fuselage engine intake section. That intake is placed on the fuselage once the fuse halves are assembled. Again, remember for this review, I haven't done any prep of the part, so all the gaps you see here are really just a function of that little bit of flash that's still on the front of those fuse halves. The cockpit section is pretty nice and comes with a seat already installed. The seat does have some belt detail molded on. The cockpit sidewalls have some detail on them, but it is a little soft. This is another area that will be addressed on the upgrades that are coming from resin to detail. The horizontal stabilizers are well cast with good detail. They'll just need a little cleanup so that the vertical stabilizers can be added to them later. Test fitting them to the fuselage halves does show that this area will need to be cleaned up a little to allow them to fit well together. Also, you can see that the elevator has been a little short shot, so that will need to be filled in with a little bit of that acrylic resin filler I mentioned earlier. The wheels are well molded with some good detail and flat spots molded in to represent the weighted look of the real plane. The landing gear moldings are nice, but probably a little oversimplified. I noticed that the landing gear is solid resin and doesn't have a metal rod inserted into it that a lot of manufacturers do add on these types of models to better handle the weight. Allen does mention that the gear is oversized for this purpose, but I think this is another area that will be addressed in future upgrades of this kit. The prop blades are nicely cast. They're really thin, and the only air bubbles in them are at the very tips of the blades and should be easily sanded smooth. The various wing pylons and avionics pods are also well molded and will benefit from just a little light sanding to get rid of the mold seam lines. The belly radome is a pretty hefty piece of resin and may benefit from being drilled out a little to lighten it up and then adding more nose weight at the more forward location under the cockpit, thereby reducing the overall model weight. A quick check of the fit of the radome to the fuselage half shows that the overall fit is really good. The clear parts are cast in resin and include the windscreen, main canopy, and the crew access doors with their blown windows. The castings are nice and clear and relatively thin given the medium which they are cast in. Just doing a simple fit check of the main part shows you the overall size of the completed model. It's going to make up into a really impressive model when complete. Now I'm really tempted to either cut off the flaps and show them in the deployed position or cut the wings and do a folded wing version. We'll see how that goes when we get to the build later on. We'll also see if we can get those detail parts added when Resin to Detail does their upgraded computer design parts. So there you go. A quick in or really out of the box review of the Icelandic Fine Arts 148th Gannet AEW3. It looks like a great kit 
especially given the nature and medium of its production. There aren't many models out there that can match the uniqueness of the Gannett, and I'm really excited about this one. I'm particularly excited about the opportunity to work with both Allen and Resin to Detail to upgrade this already great kit by offering a lot of new parts that will be 3D modeled and printed. This should really put this kit over the top. I'll be posting some updates on the future offerings of this kit within the YouTube community here and over on my Facebook page at Facebook forward slash Flying S Models. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I hope you'll consider doing so and make sure to click that notifications bell so you'll know when I post new content. If you've already subscribed, I wanna thank you for that and express my appreciation for your continued support through comments and feedback. I really hope you enjoyed this video review and want to sincerely thank Alan Wilson for producing such a great kit. And I'm really looking forward to working with Resident Detail and Alan to make it even better. We'll see you next time.